Hello and welcome everybody to the latest edition of the Buy Round interview show. We have a very, very mm, special guest. Um, someone that's actually been begging, begging to come on the show. When are you going to get me on? Always ringing me up, texting me every time we meet for a coffee. When can I come on? When can I come on? When can I come on? More of a right of reply. Um to some of the stories you've, you've featured in a, a number of the stories um jeremy Lattimore, thanks for joining us here on on the buy round yeah look mate as you know you've been uh putting a fair few things out into the uh the atmosphere some some which are totally untrue some that are are true um mm. I don't know if I've called you uh, that much to ask if I'd come back on, but yeah, me and Tyson Frizzell, who's one of our good mates, have made a joke about would he ever get us on his podcast? Because <laughs> as you saw, I brought the notepad in, so I've got a bit, bit to reply about that, here today. <laughs> that, that was, you're the only person to come in with a notepad. Uh, and basically, you, you, you are wrong because um, we were struggling for guests this week. So yep. we just thought, well, yeah, you brought me off the bench, mate, like my <laughs> footy career. <laughs> look, mate, failing to prepare is preparing to fail. So uh, oh, let's mate, go. Get that on the wall. Yeah, look, yeah. That's, oh, it's look, on my wall at home, but all good. I, I, I bet it is. Right. Well, let, let's kick off then with um, your, your right to reply, um, your, your knee injury, which I, I seem to remember at the time, there, there was you know all the major newsrooms. Um, throughout the land, you know, <laughs> in the meeting rooms before the discussion, you know, what, what are we going to go with the headline? It was COVID, COVID this, COVID that, lockdown, and then bang, Jeremy Lattimore's <laughs> knee. It's like, whoa, COVID, you're into second place. Like, Jer Jerry's got a sore <laughs> knee here. Well, that's that's how I think that you, you, you thought the severity of it was, that it was going to dominate the headlines uh, throughout <laughs> the land, uh, go global. Go viral, perhaps, with uh, just the severity of this knee injury. But, um, yeah, what's your take on it? I actually nearly did throw a, a brace on it for a giggle today just to uh, put a smile <laughs> on your face. But, look, there actually has been breaking news before the knee story. <laughs> there, um, There's a story about a bloke who's just come back from Melbourne. He, he flew, went to fly down there two weeks ago and uh, he stuffed his flight up. Do you want to tell the punters about this story? We'll... we'll, we'll <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 that that's the breaking story, Gemma. Do you not want to tell them? Well, <laughs> hmm. yeah. <I'm> <laughs> okay. So, yeah, I have just come back from Melbourne. <laughs> well, I was that keen. I went on a little recce trip two weeks earlier. Didn't I? <laughs> no, I am. Um, <laughs> I was at a podcast award ceremony yesterday for um, Head Noise, uh, which we won, actually, best uh, sporting podcast, which was great. Um, the RSVP date was the 1st of May. Yesterday was the 14th. <laughs> I thought that the date was the RSVP date, which was the 1st. Um, I only found this out <laughs> while we were taxiing <laughs> <coughs> from Sydney Airport. So two weeks ago, yes, Jeremy. I did fly down to Melbourne, fully aware of the fact that I didn't need to be there. I literally landed as soon as I got the signal. <laughs> I booked a flight to come back. Uh, of course, I called you up and said, do you want to go for a beer? A you, you, were, you were traumatized and I was like, shit, I'm there for you, mate. Yeah, like, you, you, like, you, well, I was you, really worried what yeah, I was walking you were into. Like, I thought you were meant to be down in Melbourne. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, t I'll tell you later, I'll tell you later. And then obviously, you know, you being a, a, a mate, um, you just pissed yourself laughing at my um, <laughs> my error. Yeah. You, you get a lot of laughs out of uh, unfortunate things that happened to me in my yeah. life. So, mate, look, yeah. and, and you punched through about six schooners in half an hour, so he was stressed. <laughs> I, th th this, was the, this was also the, the week after... Um, <laughs> putting diesel in a petrol car as well <laughs> so i mean actually and so what was uh, what was the podcast ceremony head noise yeah no no you uh you definitely won that the last couple of weeks <laughs> to, to be honest mate I, I actually thought i handled the trip down to melbourne quite well yeah like yeah i, I was oh i mean not in an ideal world i mean it's not i'm not going to be doing it every week mm. just flying down there but um I'm glad we won the award yesterday, but I mean, 
yeah. I, I, look, I actually... I, I'm quite proud of myself with how I actually handled it. Mm. Well, when, when obviously you're conditioned to making them sort of errors now, so every time another one happens, yeah, I mean, it's sort of water off a duck's back. And mate, off, often off I it. run into you before before school when we're dropping the kids off and you won't talk to me and I know you've had a bad morning, so <laughs> I, I just brush you up. That day you obviously wanted to talk to me, so you wanted to talk through it. But anyway, yeah. breaking news done. We're uh, over to the knee injury now around the grounds. Yeah, obviously uh, back in 2019 I um, – I think I started that game, one of about 13 games I started in the NRL and I'd played well the week before against Melbourne Storm, so uh, would have been floating around training thinking I was doing all right and um, Elliot Whitehead cut me knee and I'd had an ongoing, what is it called, what's that one, medial injury which Tyson Brazell took me out in round one and uh, I carried it through the season and um, when it first happened I wasn't sure what had happened and I was a little bit uh, worried. <laughs> it, was a, it was a severe pain. That ripping of the of the medial scar tissue, which it turned out to be, and did you get stretched off or did you get <laughs> no. carried off with the two trainers? <laughs> so, mate, I, I was in severe you, pain. You, no, you, let me finish. You no, well, I, <laughs> you've ripped me about ten times, so I get right a reply here. And um, I remember Nathan Pickworth goes, "Lutzy, are you going to be able to walk off?" <laughs> and I'm like. Fuck, bro, I don't know, eh? it's pretty sore at the moment. I go, just give me another 30 seconds. And I was like, I can't get stretched off in case this is not bad. But I may have put me, uh, spread me 112 kilo between uh, two of the trainers. And anyway, just the way I am and pushing through injuries, I've gone out the back of um, Wynn Stadium and done a few run-throughs. And uh, obviously, knee was off the bone, uh, the, the ligament was off the bone and... Um, Decided, they decided not to put me back on because it was too much of a risk. And I did end up missing three games after that. So you it came was. Back on, no, I, no, I didn't go back on. That's what you've put out into the <laughs> um, atmosphere for your podcast. That is a load of BS. And I missed three games. And I think actually, you know, remember when Honey stepped me at training and I, I went down like I'd been yes. And I, I lived off training that day. And then I come mm. back and I don't think I missed any more games. But um, that is actually the truth of the story. There was no Medicab. I may have put, shifted my weight between two of the trainers, but I did miss a few games, which is uh, the truth. Yeah, I was genuine. Like, I was prepared for the conversation. <laughs> the, the, way, the way you acted in the field was like, oh, this. There was, I oh, know, there was a carry. And as you know, I'm, you know, when I'm happy, I, you know I'm happy. When I'm down, you know I'm down. Mm. And when I'm injured, you know I'm injured. And that day, obviously, <laughs> yeah, let everyone know I was injured. Yeah. yeah. Um, anyway, first plate to do his medial. Mm. But the, the knee injury, like, it lingered. It was always there. It seemed like it was always there. And you're always complaining about it on mm. the bus, like, oh. Yeah. Anyway, thanks for listening. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, yeah. I was a professional. I did everything I could to get that knee right. I didn't drink alcohol. Mm. I looked after it and, um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, another story, the Todd Greenberg story. <sighs> Look, that one's totally true. The only thing that, obviously, you, I, I feel you misled me on that and – I'm, I am 100% sure you told me at one point in time that there were drones <laughs> flying around <laughs> the pub that you were at on Mad Monday. And I was this was the I, I wasn't I wasn't there. I'm going off what you told me. I don't know if this information is true or false, but all I know is when Todd Greenbow's come in, and obviously you know we, <laughs> I really wanted to add, add something that day, and that was my input, and he shot me, mm. <laughs> shot both oh. medials out again from did, underneath me, and didn't, I, didn't I'll never just. forget you coming up to me after uh, <laughs> the video session you go that's it this is one of the best days of my life <laughs> smiling like a cheshire cat <laughs> i think you rang me about a week later mate, crying going mate, mate i can't get over that mate, story it, like it I, was, I, I fully got embarrassed yeah it, it mate the the thing that obviously <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna we are gonna touch on this later but um <laughs> before that left field comment about um media and bulldogs mad monday which i wasn't a part of i don't even know why that came up you do like to consider yourself a bit of like a finance guru as well <laughs> <laughs> and you are like you just couldn't help yourself todd greenberg was the uh, ceo of the nrl <clears throat> at the time and come to present you know to the dragons about a number of issues uh, and you know, take questions and you just couldn't help yourself and you've gone Something about like revenue, and it was just like, well, wasn't it something to do with the the Nines World Cup was on? Yes, and I said, well, yeah, so about, where's that where, going? Where, where's Even that? And, and everyone was just like, 
What? I should have put the cue in there. Yeah, I can that, walk that, out the that, door that, then. You should have said, no, just, just no more. Pretty sure I got a head knock at training that morning. Yeah. So it was, a, it was a rough day. Mate, it, it is still to this day one of my favorite ever <laughs> training sessions. I know, you, you actually love to bring it. Oh, me, mate. So, it was, um, it, just seeing you go, go into your seat and slide <laughs> back. And I knew you'd be thinking, I really hope no one brings this up after, after this meeting. I really hope they don't. And it was literally like out the door and we're like, ah. The big Cheshire cat running after me. <laughs> hey, Lutzi, tell us about that again. <laughs> I was banned from talking in a team environment from then on. Oh, anyway, uh, that was the last writer reply. Uh, the, thought, the, thought, the Paddy Butcher. Yeah. That, that's fine. Yeah. Just two pommies having a laugh at my expense. Mate, that was spare again, play. An another great day mm. for me and Gaz, but yeah. you you didn't enjoy that day, did you? I didn't know what you were talking yeah. about. <laughs> I still don't know what you're talking about. You still talk about in WhatsApp, me, you and Gaz, and I don't know what you're talking about. Mm. But um, anyway, hey, on to more well, important things. Basically, it, I think it, it stands- It's a shit haircut, isn't it? Well, basically, it's like, you know, Back, back in the day and, and being in, in England, at the England camp, like everyone had noticed when you get a haircut. It's kind of like, you know, a week, you, today. You, you don't get like a, a, a weekly trim. That that thing, it was like, you're know, you going to get a cut every couple of months. So everyone had noticed when you get a haircut. And there was a couple of lads in, in England camp that had some absolute shockers. So we say, oh, they've been butchered. And then Patty Butcher is a old EastEnders character. Yeah, been mashing for us. <laughs> so we thought you'd been butchered. Hey, what's it? You came in with a fresh haircut thinking you were mad. Conor <laughs> McGregor. Yeah, you're like, oh, look at me, I'm fast. Oh. And then me and Gaz have just been like, hey, you get a bit of sirloin steak with that, Lutzi? You want a bit of mash and peas? <laughs> and, you oh. would, and the best thing is, is obviously me and Gaz found it hilarious. And you're like, nah, nah. Yeah, well, but, you just try and turn it back on me because usually I'd be owning that situation, but uh, mm. not when you bring out your shit bombing calls. Oh, well. Um, right, the right reply is uh, over and done. Let's done. get on to Let's um, get on to business. <sighs> but I, I enjoyed that, Jerry. Lots of, well, I'm sure we'll have plenty of laughs along the way. Um, growing up in... P Mac, Port Macquarie. Um, how was life there as a kid? And um, did you always want to be a footballer? Um, mate, Port Macquarie is awesome. I, I still love the place. It holds a place in my heart. Mum and dad are still out there, my little sister. We, we went there for a trip last year for uh, the Port Macquarie Sharks uh, sportsman's dinner, which was good fun. But mate, it was awesome going out there. Grew up on the beach. Well, dad was a horse trainer, so he lived out on a bit of property near the race course. But I. Um, I love the beach. I was a boogie boarder. I, I had a year off footy <laughs> when I was fifteen to bodyboarding to do uh, yeah a few other things. It was it was good fun. But um, so you took it. So you, went, <laughs> you started playing as a as a youngster, like most of us do, and then you, you legitimately had a year out to bodyboard, not surf, but actually bodyboard. <laughs> I, I, I was an Escalade rider, so my, my my room was full of Riptide magazines and. Um, I went in bodyboard competitions. <laughs> yeah, yeah I legit did. Know this. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, I went in bodyboard comp. I wasn't very good. How'd I you go? Because you don't seem like you know. I don't know what the frame of a mm. a bodyboarder looks like. I mean, yeah, no, no. You don't look like yeah. At, at that point in time, I was a, a little bit long, but yeah, since then I've grown into my teeth and my uh, <laughs> my body. So um, everything's a little bit more in proportion now. But uh, I wasn't a great bodyboarder. I think I, my highest was about a second in the A division, but it was good fun. Some of my best mates uh, growing up, we, that's all we did. But uh, yeah, that, that was short, short winded. And I went back to playing footy in under 16s. I had under 15s off to bodyboard. That was the only comp I won after about, other boys won after about under 13s. So we lost 14, 16s, 18s. So maybe they needed to me uh, to go on more bodyboarding tours. Mm, and then how did the um, the move to, it was the Sharks at first, wasn't it? it how, how did that come about? Because I remember speaking to someone up in, in Port Macquarie and they, they do hold you in high regard they, they genuinely do um, and you know they were, they were telling me a, a bit of a tale around how it was a bit of a, a strange move down to Sydney you weren't really particularly on the radar but then someone picked you up someone from the Sharks picked you up yeah so my mate at the time um, he was signed with Cronulla Sharks and he literally gave me an interchange card off the bench and I got an invite to a holiday clinic and um they were impressed with my skill level at that point in time. I was probably 17, just the year before I turned 18. And 
Um, they offered me a contract um, probably in about February or March that year, and just from a like a just from coming down to a training camp, yeah, because they come up in February to play an NRL trial, the Cronulla Sharks, and um, had a meeting with a guy called Theo Burgess. He met mum and dad, um, and at that point in time, like I was starting to play some really good footy, so I was sort of just parked it for the moment, and then um, I played under 18s one day, got a hundred meter try, scored three tries, made my first grade debut, popped my shoulder, uh, you know the shoulder story. And then, um, yeah, thankfully they still took me in, paid for my shoulder reco, and that's how oh, I landed at re- Cronulla Sharks. You had a reco at? Yeah, yeah. So that, that was literally my season ended. It was Mother's Day when I popped it and um, I had to get a reco. And, um, but thankfully they still took me. I wasn't signed by that point, but they luckily saw enough in me to bring me to Sydney. <laughs> Otherwise, who knows what I'd be doing back up there. It was part of the attraction – Coming to Cronulla, that they had a beach so you could keep the body down. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, to be fair, as you know, being a shy local, you know, it's a bit more secluded. You, you got to go over the bridges to get there. I did love that part of the world and obviously on a bigger scale. And um, yeah, obviously the body, the, the waves played a part in that, being able to keep following that childhood dream. Yeah. Though it's got plenty of cobwebs on it in the uh, garage. Now I've tried to pass that skill on to my young fella, but he just doesn't have it. No, no. <laughs> it's not. It's not. It's, it's not, not hereditary. hereditary. <laughs> it's not hereditary. Yeah, it's not an inherited skill. <laughs> Mate, see, like, who's who? Why, why didn't you surf? Like, why bodyboard? I've got a surfboard now, and I try and surf. I'm just, I'm not very good at it. Mm. Probably a little bit, bit too co- uh, too much coordination for this guy. So uh, boogie boarding was where it was at. Popping ARSs backflips, but we mm. don't need to go there. You don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, when when you when you did leave, um. That you know, Port Macquarie is not a tiny town, but um, how did you find Sydney? How did you find the big smoke? Was it a bit of a an eye opener for you? Oh, for sure. Um, th- like like I said, sh- the Shire is like a bigger Port Macquarie on a, a much larger scale. And um, I remember first moving down, you know, thinking I'm playing Jersey flag, I'm killing it, and then you go out and everyone's ripped up, shredded, and everyone's good looking. It was a a bit of a uh, a reality shock, but um, I, I love I love the Shire now. Obviously, been there for a long time. Um, the city was a shock when I'd go in there. I was definitely lost. I remember driving in the city, and I went down a one way street, and the cars have taken off at the lights, and they're coming towards me. And yeah, I don't think I went back. And that was before <laughs> GPS on the phone, so I'm following the maps. And as you know, sometimes well, obviously I don't get rattled now, but I used to get rattled back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, yeah, I think, I think that was the end of me uh, city trips. It wasn't for me. I think I'd get on the train. Mm. Um, but yeah, you, you you quickly made Sydney a, a home, and obviously you, you like it there. Despite you, you went over to the Warriors for a little bit, but Sydney um, remained a home, didn't it? It did. It did indeed. And yeah, obviously a little hiatus to uh, play for the Warriors, uh, which was an awesome time in my life. Mm. You uh, you did play for plenty of clubs. Um, which one do you actually affiliate yourself with the most? Yep, I um I'm still employed at the Dragons to do corporate stuff. Um, I played the most games for the Panthers. Played a role in a f- uh, few few of the boys who have come through there. So loyalties with the uh, Dragons, but you know when I'm sitting with the young bloke who's now crossed from the Dragons to the Panthers. I like to say I played a, a role in that. You know, I brought Nathan Cleary through. <laughs> Isaiah Yeah, mm-hmm. Fisher Harris, Moses Leota. You you laid the platform. I did. I showed them not what to do off the field. So they uh, mm-hmm. and they've gone away and they've they've done that really well. And obviously, yeah, they're a successful football club. And my last year there was when the academy was opened and we started training from there. So um, yeah, it's I still love seeing them do well. But I'd love to see the Dragons do a bit better, oh, which see, they've started the year well. They they have done. Uh, obviously you. I remember you um, telling me about your your time in the Warriors. I, I always I always get fascinated the fact that like knowing you, it always bamboozled me that you you played for the Warriors. Um, you had a, quite the influence on um, Sean Johnson. <laughs> I remember you telling me much, and it was one of those stories where you know I didn't want to interject. I just went, I'm just gonna I'm gonna keep a straight face and let this one roll. So can you just tell tell the viewers? Obviously, you're a you know a, a seasoned veteran front row, and young young Sean Johnson is, um, you know, oh, right. waiting in the wings, and you just had a bit of a word with him, just a bit of bit of advice. 
so at this point in time, I'm playing for the Auckland Vulcans. I'm a veteran of 25 NRL games. I remember Shawnee uh, goes to me one day, he goes, man, I don't know if I'm ever going to play NRL. You know, it was like round three. And um, he was getting a bit frustrated. I'm like, man, you just got to keep working hard and it'll come. <laughs> I remember telling this to Jammer. I could see his, his face going the same colour as his hair as he's looking at me. I think it was with Gypsy and you see just lost your shit. And I was like, oh, fuck, I've done it again. <laughs> but hey, Sean, if you're listening, mate, you're welcome. <laughs> By the end of that year, he was playing in a grand final. I kept him on the straight and narrow. I think he might have even said it when he got the rookie of the year at the Warriors. Pre- I just want to thank Jeremy Blattermore <laughs> for that advice at Vulcan Park in round three. <laughs> Oh shit! Oh mate, that's man, I'm sweat. Is this hair coming on, mate? What's that, coming for me uh, now? Honestly, that when you were telling me that story, it was just sort of that. I'm like, yeah, you you did, did you? Oh, okay, <laughs> keep going, and then what happened? <laughs> Give me more rope. <laughs> oh. mate, I, was, I was gonna ask, and um, so you're saying you, you've got the affiliation with um, the dragons and. And um, you know you like to lay claim to some of the stuff with the Panthers. There is that because you've got the least amount of hate towards those two clubs? Because you are, you can be a bit, <laughs> you, you can hold a grudge. Hold on, I just got to keep my notes. I got on you. If you can yeah, for me a bit more. Because <laughs> you, you know you, you fell out with, you know you fell out with plenty of coaches. You know you <laughs> fell out with Flano, McGregor, Cleary, Griffin. <laughs> Like this is all false. <laughs> <laughs> Oi, I'll come from the top row. <laughs> I've still got plenty to talk about here. I'll go back. I'll go back to the notepad. <laughs> um, it, you, <laughs> one of the, because uh, I've just been getting a bit of background. I'm surprised you said the Panthers actually because um, 85 the, games or what? Yeah, no, that you, you still got an affiliation there because I thought when. I think when when Griffin was there, he'd give you a, an almighty <laughs> spray at half time because you tried to throw throw Cartwright under the bus. <laughs> Do you want just me to tell before, story just, be, just, just before half time? No, this is a good story actually. <laughs> anyway, we're playing against the uh, Bronco. It was Tamari Martin's debut, <laughs> and uh, n- another young fellow I took under the wing at one point. <laughs> 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 I, I, look, I know he kicked the winning field goal. In oh, this I'll game. get there. I'll get there. Let me finish. Oh, yeah. oh, sorry, my sorry. time is wrong. Sorry, bro. sorry. Yeah. Anyway, uh, we're playing against the Broncos a year after they won the premiership, and uh, I've come on trying to bring energy as I always do. And see why Matangi actually wasn't cut right. He was inside me, built wider than he is higher, and he shot out of the line and took Sam Thaday out after he's played out the back to Milford, and I've shot out to try and uh, put pressure on him. Boom off his left, Winburn <laughs> steps back under, goes and scores under the post. I'm, like, fuck, I'm thinking, was that my fault? I'm like, no, no, if Tungs didn't take him out, I go, I would have had him there to help defend on the inside, or he would have followed me. <laughs> anyway, going for half time, and um, Garth Brennan comes over with the uh, the video footage, and he goes, mate, you gotta stay square. I say, stay square. I go, I go, you want me to go pressure Milford? I go, if Tungs doesn't take out uh, Thought, eh? I go, I got him on the inside. Uh, hooks on the other side of the room, <laughs> turns around, hey, fuck me, Lattimore. <laughs> you fucking jumping in shadows out there. <laughs> Stay square. <laughs> I look up, Mansour and Pete Wallace <laughs> stood up, <laughs> walked into the other room on their beetroot red. I'm like, fuck, all right, all right, what do you want me to do? Uh, anyway, so I was 18 nil, go back on, score a try, get us back in the game. and. Uh, <laughs> I just said to Murray, can you kick a field goal? We won 1918. I got suspended for a crush attack, and that was the uh, the beginning of the end of my Panthers career. <laughs> so you didn't exactly leave on good terms, did you? No, 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 I actually did. Uh, well, I brought Hook to the Dragons. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, we, we get along fine. But he, I, deserve, I, don't, I still don't know if I deserve that spray. Sorry, then Cartwright did get a spray as well because he, um, he, he was crabbing across field defending. And I remember Hook go, hey, fuck me, Cartwright. You're heading towards my goal road. Stay square. <laughs> I think the best part. Took the heat it, off me, though. Yeah, I, I, the best part of the story is the fact that, the fact that Mansour and Wallace, <laughs> like, lost it. Like... That, you know, obviously we're in professional environments, but, you know, we, yeah. I still I still talk to Cam Serrato and he brings it up. And I remember Will Smith put a picture of a dog jumping at the shadow in the WhatsApp. It's still imprinted in my head. <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, at least you got the win. 
<laughs> at we least did. you got the win. Yeah, um, man, that was good. So yeah, you got grudges against plenty of your coaches. <laughs> uh, I just said there's no <laughs> grudges. <in there. laughs> well, um, I remember we, <laughs> when you know, we, we speak about our friendship that we, we, with Frizzell, we're all we're pretty tight. We used to come up with like a, a, a hate 13 of Jeremy Latmore's <laughs> or hate 17, like people that he's fallen out with across the years. <laughs> Mate, do you want me to roll through your 13? <laughs> <laughs> Billy Slater at fullback. <laughs> <laughs> no, but play, players that you play with. Oh, oh, me. So you actually want me to say? Well, mate, no, fuck. no, no. I, I'm, I'm joking on, oh. on, on the hate thirteen. But well, um, number eight, James Graham. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is is there any is there any teammates that you you didn't get along with that you didn't like? Oh, I just been one or two across the years, but mate, it's actually funny you asked me this at this point in time. So, um, one of mine and your ex teammates. Paul Vaughan, um, not, not long ago of... Uh, yeah, did you not get on with Vaughan? Oh, we got along all right, but in, we don't send Christmas cards to each other, but he, um, end of last year there, well, I made a joke to Lomax one day saying, you know, why don't you get in the ring Z- with... Zach. Zach Lomax, yeah, sorry, Zach Lomax. And I said, why don't you get in the ring with Tyson Mazzell? I go, next off season, I go, and, and I'll have a crack with Vaughan. <laughs> Well, Vaughn, he's he gone and told Vaughn. Oh, Vaughn, because, because Zach and Frizzell last year. They have a little bit of beef. Yeah. Yeah, and they still haven't kissed and made up. So what better place to do it on a no-limit boxing card? And then you said you'd jump in the ring. I'd have a crack with Vaughn, and Vaughn's messaged me on Instagram saying, when are we jumping in the ring? And I was, we don't follow each other on Insta. We don't send each other Christmas cards. So I'm like, next off season. I'm, um, mate, I don't know. We, we got along okay, but for, I'd love to get in the ring with him and have a crack. What do you reckon? We'll throw da- Matt Dufty and Gareth on the card. <laughs> 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 Who can we throw you up against? You oh. and Blake Laurie? Oh, no way. <laughs> no, me and Blake are... Yeah, no, I'm joking. Relax. Go. But anyway, yeah, that, that's what... So uh, you'd seriously get in the ring with Vaughn? Mate, yeah. If, if he's keen to have a crack. Like, it's, oh, wait, I think I've told you before, I wouldn't mind having a... Um, a crack in the ring. Not that I think I could fight, but it's just more about the um, that team mentality to an individual athlete mentality. So, you know, if you, you stuff up on a team sport, you might cover my ass if I miss the tackle or Matungi doesn't take out Thido. But <laughs> in the boxing <laughs> ring, you drop your fist, you get knocked out. So mm. that 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 sort of um, does interest me. Doing it on a on a like a, a big card and on TV, that's a different variable. But man. You know, I, I, I've got a son and I coach all these mates and I tell them to have a crack and put yourself out there. So I'll definitely have a crack. Paul, if you're watching. <laughs> Good on you. That'd be, <clears throat> be interesting to watch that. Mm. I think I, I... I need to start training though. So well, I, you, mate, you, Paul, sign the, uh, sign the contract. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'd be more interested in seeing... Frizzell and Lomax. Oh, right mate, I would too. That would be. <laughs> Talk about someone holding a grudge, that frizz. <laughs> 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 mate, Lowie was just looking to celebrate with him and Tyson's still not talking to him. Love you, frizz. Mm. Um, yeah, but, but when you were tired, though, um, like you're talking about, you know, you want to train for a boxing fight. You, you still played a bit of like local footy, didn't you? Yeah, I played a bit of uh, footy with. Uh, Mittagong the last two years down in the, the Group 6 competition, which was a bit of fun. I only played three games last year. I got Symbian in my first game, sent <laughs> off in my third and got suspended for four games, so I'm done. But I, uh, what, did, what did you get? Um... So, well, the Symbian, I took a guy out late because I was really fatigued. I hadn't run in about six weeks. So I did my calf and um, decided the to play. L- lingering knee injury. Ling- lingering <laughs> knee. And uh, I was actually trying to get some cash because I was heading over to Europe at the end of last year. But I... Um, I took another guy out late in the third game and then the ref, he's got a bit of a bad reputation in the group six competition, nameless, and um, he sent me to the the sin bin and I, I mumbled something under my breath. Um, and then he said, he said, mate, come here, sent me off. And what he said I said in the post-match report was nowhere near what I said because I asked him to repeat back to me what I said. And I shouldn't back chat to the referee, but I was Never. heavily fatigued, we were getting beat. And I threw the toys out of the cot. So I apologise to that referee. But and that, that was my last game in, in, in that sort of competition. I, I did play in a nines comp at the start of the year, actually. 
Did you? Where, yep. where are? Up in, um, up, in, up in the Gold Coast. So I played with a heap of boys from the South Coast. Curtis Scott, actually, he, he come along and, and played with us. Mate, that, that guy does belong back in the NRL. He, uh, I think he got player of the tournament. He was phenomenal. Uh, only messaged me like three days before it to ask if he could come and play. And, um, mate, yeah, uh, hopefully gets all his legal stuff sorted and get him back in the NRL where, where he belongs because he's uh, – he definitely looks uh, like he hasn't missed a beat. Yeah. And I, I, even myself, you know, I didn't miss a beat either. I was out there, you know. More How'd space. you go in the nines? I actually went okay. Way better than uh, I played who, for what, Mittagong the last what, two years. What was the standard? Like, there was one team with like Toddy Carney, Zeb Taylor, um, Blake Leary, like that, about six or seven ex NRL boys in there. Greg Bird. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, but we ended up winning it. We beat a oh, Port Macquarie team, not the Sharks, the Breakers, and they had a red-hot uh, young team, but... Um, yeah, we just had a few boys from the South Coast. They were gone. Heap of boys from Mittagong this year. It was good fun. Yeah. Great night out too. Do you um, – do like I, I've never really seen the attraction in continuing playing, like local league. I, yeah. I don't know. Oh, you got paid 800K a year. I got 100. Oh. So, mate, some of us need to raise money. <laughs> it was a new – another job do for they, me. Do they not – do they not – do the – like – they not come after you. Yeah, for sure. Out in the group six con. But in saying that, like in the fan spray, I remember the, the first game I, I, I was getting pizzled when I got Simbin. Really? Uh, yeah. <laughs> but no, nah, for the most part, the, the players, like they're obviously trying to, you know, take you on, but they're all respectful and you have a laugh at the end of the game. It was good. Uh, you know, um, you, you enjoy people's company and having a laugh, so mm. probably mix that yeah, up with more, being serious. It's more yeah. of a, a, a social thing than... Yes, it's not very serious. I obviously want to win, but it was a bit of fun. Yeah. Um, what else are you up to in uh, retirement? Well, I've got I've got a few other stories to. Um, oh, I could imagine to, to go back to, but um, yeah, what else are you up to in? Uh, I know you do a little bit of a little bit of mortgage broken. Um, obviously, we had uh, Mark Boris on. Um, so uh, similar level broker. Is that what you're trying to imply? Yeah, you said it, not hey. me. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just letting you know we had him on. Cut, couple of guys that get better with uh, age, if, if that's what you're implying, <laughs> me and Mark. But yeah, look, my, my main gig at the moment is mortgage broken, so I do that with Oxygen Home Loans. Um, if anyone needs a home loan, um, I'm still. Is it, in- is it called Oxygen because you steal it? <laughs> Settle down, gravity. <laughs> Don't bring me down. <laughs> um, and then still employed with the Dragons, which obviously I love having the connection with the football club. And, um, you know, as you know from last year, we uh, did some fun things there. But uh, two new businesses, which have, you know, sort of in their infancy, uh, one's called LCI Sports. So me and Lukey Lewis are uh, involved, with, uh, like directors in that with a, an accountant and a financial planner. So so what 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 is that? I, I remember um, Luke Lewis coming on and, and speaking briefly about it, but he's got, that many things happening, it was hard to He's, you know, remember. The, I deliver stuff and that was the main one, but LCI Sports as well. So what what is LCI Sports? Yep, so any any sort of athlete. So, we, you know, we've already got league, rugby union, um, jockeys, um, but, yeah, you know, we can cover all codes, but pretty oh, well. Oh, so you're like a, like, a, we're, like a management company? Yeah, but nothing to do with player management. So we're sort of the in-between the player and the um, – in the in the manager, but helping players build wealth. So under that umbrella falls accounting, mortgage broken, um, wealth planning, property development. Um, so just say example, you got a 21 year old kid who comes in, um, he's on 300k. You try and map out a plan for him, and you know across time, whether that's buying, selling property, inv- investing into managed funds, because we offer property development. There's going to be sites come up there. You can throw a couple hundred at that. Um, to get you to a point when you retire that um, you've got the freedom to choose to do what you want. And in saying that, we've got two or three boys. One of them's just retired who we're now mapping out selling houses and, you know, moving money into other spots or boys in their last couple of years of their career. So it doesn't and, – and we see it as a 40 to 50-year thing. It's not a one to two-year thing. It's something that, you know, we want these boys to be with us for life. Yeah. Um, and then the other business I'm involved in is with Lukey Lewis again. Uh, as you know, we're great mates. Um, and a, a young fellow who was at Cronulla, Jaden Walker. So he, he's sort of the brains of the operation. Um, but Luke and I are sort of out there helping him build it. And, um, you know, because we've got relationships with a lot of athletes and that that's Victor Radley's view. So oh, that, yeah. that started through Jaden being great mates with Victor. Um, and, and they started doing the beers and merch and, mate, massive success. So 
Now we've got a fair few players under our umbrella. We launched Nico Hines t- tomorrow, which that'll be a couple of weeks when this comes out. What, but what, what are you doing with Nico? Uh, doing cl- uh, shirts and oh, hats yeah. with him tomorrow. And then there'll be more stuff down the track. T- Toby Rudolph, he'll have some stuff coming out in the next probably couple of weeks, Harry Grant. Um, but again, we're looking to go across codes and uh, we've got someone helping us in the background there as well who's, who's been a pretty successful in business. Yeah, no, so what, what will you be looking to do with like, how, will it all, is it like, are they all like merchandise yep. so, sort yep. of like individual merch yep yep, yep. so there's, there's obviously the merch side of it um the commercial relationships uh social media we're, we're going to do like uh i've got to meet with jason nightgale he owns the elite business school in the next couple of weeks him and his business partner beck but getting like young players before they play nrl to know how to leverage their personal brand and use their profile properly in social media so that when they get to 100 games you know, the world's their oyster. Because as you know, rugby league is a short time frame, but um, there are people who want to be aligned with athletes and leverage their brand and also help the athletes um, make money ultimately. So um, that, that's a, a pretty exciting one and something which is looking like it's going to grow pretty quickly. And what's that called? So that's called Unico and Unite. Yep. So I'm sure everyone will start to see it everywhere through um, both mine and Louis' social medias and Nico's been sharing a lot of stuff for the last couple of days, but – Pretty pumped, mate. And that's obviously a passion and purpose. Both of them businesses is working with athletes. So I used to be involved on the RLPA board. So something that has always been close to my heart. And uh, when you know yourself, when you retire from rugby league, you try and find something that, you know, feeds that passion and purpose and getting out of bed every day. And these two babies definitely make me, um, you know, jump up and, you know, you want to help the boys make that time of uh, playing footy and the money they earn as well as the profile they'll build to set themselves up yeah. uh, after rugby league. How, how did you find retirement in general like i like to speak to former players about this like you obviously i, I know you, you you train a lot how how important has that been in your, in your transition massive mate and i know I mean you speak about this a lot with r- routine um but yeah I, tra- I train with lukey lewis every day yes as everyone likes to say when i say that i train with luke why don't you look like luke he um he looks like he belongs on a bodybuilding circuit i was actually spotting him this morning doing chins mate he is a big human being but um obviously different genetics to me and i, I don't get that size but yeah the, the training's massive I, I, i'm doing weights every day bit of cardio sauna training with him talking uh, rubbish having a laugh and uh, obviously hard to replicate 30 boys in a room having a laugh as you know and that um yeah that environment but uh we, we have a laugh and yeah just the routine and you know with the kids and um work and just building that but obviously i retired at the end of 2019 so that was into a covid world and that was hard had a bit of money in the stock market as you know which didn't go real well and um then mortgage broken self-employed i was homeschooling the um my, my son at that point in time so yeah it was, that that was that was a hard year like it, getting used to that at the end of the day like it was just a bit of a roller coaster yeah uh, obviously had you and tyson to always bring my mood down so that that helped <laughs> <laughs> but no it was um i put in a lot of work when i played footy i never earned five hundred thousand a year so it wasn't a big adjustment for that um in that sense but you know i love the lads and uh, i love being around the boys so that was something that i did find hard to replace and i think me and luke started training to go in the middle of that year and yeah that's been a constant for the last what three years i've been retired now yeah good <clears throat> i'm glad to hear that um obviously i we speak pretty regularly but i just think it's you know it's important for for people to know um i'll go back to a, a, a couple of the stories um <laughs> i love it. I, love, I, love, I love knowing what's so coming here you <laughs> <laughs> the um th- there's been a, a few incidences that have that have happened that you know you, you just one of these would be, would be enough, but there's plenty of them. You, you spoke there about the the share market. Um, <laughs> another, I remember that that training session <laughs> where you kept running into the sheds to go f- to the toilet, and I was like, "What is it? What is he doing?" But you, yeah. I was waiting you, on a stock announcement. <laughs> 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 yeah, that was. Uh, that, that, I let that take a little bit too much control of my life at one point. <laughs> Mate, I was just going to go to the toilet again, Mary. Fuck, like, he went five minutes ago. Yeah, I'm busting. <laughs> I think I ate something last night. <laughs> yeah, but um, anyway, yeah, leave that. That's <clears throat> it, what, it, what, it, what, But like, again, we're professional athletes and obviously very dedicated, but 
you know, you'd made the, you, you knew a stock announcement was coming that you had shares in that was going to potentially skyrocket. I hopefully, this year. retire me from rugby yeah. league. <laughs> you were going. I'm not in, retired. Yeah, you, you were going to check if you needed to be. Here. Sorry, Mary, I am done. Um, mate, that, that, happy resignation letter in the bag too. Mm, um, <laughs> Trent Merrin. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't need a payout. <laughs> I'm sweet. Um, mate, the, the time you uh, um, sometimes going down, for, obviously living in the Shire, all the home games or a lot of the home games are in, in Wollongong. Sometimes traffic can uh, get the better of us. Um, and there was one particular game in particular where <laughs> <just> that, that, <laughs> that game where you were clock watching um, and realising that you, you weren't going to make the game on time, were you? Um, can, can you can you talk us through that? Yeah, look, that was a um, it was obviously a tragic uh, accident that day, and you know everyone's communicating in the WhatsApp, go this way, do this, it'll get you there a little bit quicker. I've switched off for the Taraji turn, missed the Taraji turn. Literally, it's four thirty now. You you know you're a bit OCD before games, and I, I was a little bit OCD, so I like to get there at four o'clock. It's already four thirty. I move about a hundred meters in twenty five minutes, and. Um, I just I have to pull the uh, eject button, so I park my car on the side of the road, <laughs> start hitchhiking back towards Sydney. Um, got the dragon's what? kit on, got the bag over me. You going back to war? Because I had to get back to Taraji turn off, so oh. I, I lost focus and missed the turn off, and I only realised about well twenty minutes down the road that I'd missed it. I don't know what I was doing at the time, just in Jerryland and um, hitchhike. I'll never forget the guy's name. His name's, name was Brett. Picked me up in his car. He recognised me, had a laugh and said, jump in. Went up, turned at Taraji. Went like the back streets and get all the way to the ferry meadow, meadow fields there. Traffic's not moving. I'm like, it's like after five now. And what time did you need? What time? Was we are playing at six. It was a six o'clock oh, game six that day. Yeah, we were playing the Cowboys. It was my 50th Dragons game. And um, yeah, anyway. I forgot. Yeah. And, and, and all, oh, mate, I'm rattled, rattled. And, um, you know, m most of the boys are at the game by this point. And anyway, I'll go, bro, if I see someone on a motorbike, I'm just going to hit him up, throw me on the back. And he's like, oh, yeah, sweet, like whatever. Anyway, this fella pulls up on a motorbike and I jump out and I think he thinks I'm coming to get him. I go, wait, bro. I go, can you give me a lift? And he sort of looks me up and down. He goes, Lattimore. He goes, yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. He goes, I'm waiting for a mate. I go, brother, can you just drop me to the game? Anyway, he goes, oh, get on. <laughs> the old, I'm just waiting for a mate. Yeah, I know, literally. <laughs> I thought he was going to run off yeah. on me. Anyway, jump on the back, cuddle him like <laughs> big koala bear on the back and he uh, starts driving, no helmet on, reeking of alcohol, like absolutely Costa Rican. Really? Yeah, yeah. And, um, he didn't have a helmet on or? I didn't have a helmet yeah, on. Yeah. He, he, but anyway, yeah. you, you know, along the Wollongong front yeah. there, how there's oh. the speed humps. Mm. Mate, I, I reckon he's hit every one of them at about 60K. I'm freaking out. My... <laughs> Anyway, I make it to the game. I remember like sprinting down, like the Fox camera was there. And got, oh, sorry, because and, and he's obviously reckoning, I guess he stop about 300 metres up the road, drop me off, because the cops are always around the stadium. And uh, I said, I'll give him uh, a signed jersey. Got his number. Mate, I think by the time the game finished, he's, hey, brother, how are you going with that jersey? I'm like, mate, I just played a game of footy. <laughs> I'm like, lad, give me a week. And then anyway, Monday, hey, brother, I just wonder when you're going to send yeah. that jersey. I'm like, brother, I'll give me a minute, eh? But anyway, I, I, I sprint down into the sheds. It's literally about 5.20 now. So I had a routine where I'd have to have a massage, I'd drink a, um, Red v, a Red Bull, have a coffee. Anyway, I run in and not Corey Norman, he's the most relaxed man in the world. And he's like crying, going, bro, you're that rattled, eh? Like, he goes, you're, you're, you're gonna, like, like trying to get in my head. Anyway, I ended up actually... Um, because of the emotion and everything, and the well, not the emotion, the adrenaline, yeah, spewed up the Red Bull and coffee out in the warm up. But um, I ended up really having a big impact in me 25 minutes on the field. <laughs> it was good, and we won. <laughs> and you know, we won. <laughs> uh, I, um, I didn't know this, but um, <clears throat> one, one of your other routines that I've been in, informed um, is when you stayed in a hotel. You used, to, you used to have to make your bed. Yeah. Oh, Josh Mantle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look, I'd have to make the bed before I left on away games. Before you left for the before game? Before I left, yeah. I think I got injured once when I didn't make it. So after that, I always <laughs> made my bed. And I remember I went to go out and he jumped on my bed and messed it up and I was like filthy. I think I corked him before the game. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. So, yeah, I was ropeable. So, yeah. what you just about to leave, and he's just jumped on it. Well, yeah, I, I could just see him run and jump on me, and he goes, "Lattie," and like just tries to throw me off. I'm like, well, "What the fuck are you trying to get in my head before the game?" Like, I'm trying to focus. <laughs> <laughs> big kid, big kid. But yeah, that that was one of my. Um, Why making the bed? Though? I, I think like I, I, like I said, I got in, I think I got injured once when I did make my bed. So because it was when I was a kid, I had five beers before a game, and I popped my shoulder the next day. So I never drank before a game after that, except the, the nines in Gold Coast. I had twenty beers on the Friday and played good on the Saturday. So that was the only time. That's a bit. That's a bit. That's directly linked to performance. Where making your bet, like I'm, I'm, oh, you know, but that, yeah, I know, I did. Mate, don't you? Yeah, yeah. mate, you smelling salt. Actually, do you want to touch well, on well, smelling well, salt? That's it's that's on, next. It's yeah, council. Yeah, it's coming up. <laughs> it's all coming up. Um, yeah, making making the bed. Yeah, I, don't, I just because I, I I'm sure I got injured. Or I, I got an injury and I didn't make my bed. And it was the only time I didn't make my bed. So after that, I was OCD. Like, I, I, like you know what? It, it's funny. Like. You with like your best mates, and obviously again, <clears throat> you, you you're all you've got the same desired outcomes. You want to make obviously win games, win the comp, all that sort of stuff. But there's there's no other job like it where you can you, you know someone's so serious about something so little, and people go out, go out their way to rally you, mm -hmm. even though it could potentially affect them. Like man, so mess. Do they really do that? Hundred percent. Remember when? Oh. Remember when Blocker and Vaughnie wrestled before the game and one of them passed out? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jimmy Maloney, he was obviously the most relaxed man in the world. He made a couple of bets with me before games. I don't know if I can repeat them on camera, but he, uh, yeah, I'm never forgetting. We're him. just like trying to wind each other up as well. Like yeah. distract Get in their head, getting, yeah. Getting each other's head. It's just like. Because head cases, mate. Yeah, yeah. We That's are. why we are the way we are. <clears throat> we are. I um. I, di I did enjoy hearing about your bet. Oh, I bet you did. Yeah. You, you love hearing that stuff about me. Yeah. Um. Uh, another one. The the Cam Smith need to the um. That like. I I reckon they get asked about that about you all the time. But I. Did you try and lay claim to you, you meant it? Because it's Mate, all, all I know is his sword and the groin region in my face, and you know how he's like real strong through the hips. On, what, what, what what happened? You, he tackled you. Yeah, I, I was. Yeah, we we'll, were we'll the line, and, and he's like, I think he was holding down. I had it near my face, and I just threw my arm up to try and throw him off, and I must have hit him in the um like in the, the balls. Yeah, and. He's like rolled over on the ground and Mac has jumped over and scored a try. And um, I remember like next scrum, I go, oh, you're all good, bro. Like the cag's all right. And he uh, like was filthy at me. Um, but I know Louis asked him since like what I'm like and, you know, Louis backed me up and said, I'm a good bloke, so love you, Cam. You're the man. <laughs> you're the real goat. I'm the battling goat. <laughs> <laughs> Two goats colliding. <laughs> I'm goat off the field. You're goat on it. But you, yeah, you, you, you didn't mean it, but it, it's sort of become part of the... There was an the, intention the to throw him off me. It wasn't, I'm going to smack him in the balls. Like, yeah. it was just, mate, you're freaking strong and you're trying to choke me with your... Uh, jump yeah. off. Try assist, help yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you would be claiming that for a try assist. Um, uh -huh. The uh, One of the things, when we, when we first met at the Dragons, <laughs> you, you, I did, did get a a sense that you'd be a bit hostile towards me. Now, now you put this down to- That night of Dragonfly? You you <laughs> thought we'd met before, but. <laughs> in fair, it was back in 2012 actually. And um, I'd had the Dragons reunion, so I'd had a fair session. It was, a, uh, it was about a lunchtime start. And I think I went in there with Gypsy actually. And by the time I saw you, I remember you with Halla, Dean Hallatower. Mm -hmm. Maybe a few other lads, and obviously you come across. You're playing really well for the Bulldogs that year. I was still a young player. I'm like, there's Jimmy Graham. You remember the same age? I was, yeah, no, but you're well known. I was a battler. Okay. Yeah, you're the big English superstar. Yeah. Come over. I'm the guy who's yeah. just come back yeah. from New Zealand, mentoring yeah. Sean Johnson. <laughs> Dragons have heard about me mentoring Sean. Yeah. We're like, we'll give this guy an opportunity. <laughs> so, um, mate, I go up, introduce myself. I'm like, oh, he's an arrogant prick, this big red headed thing. And um, anyway, that was sort of the end. Same thing happened with Jay Stanley, actually. You remember this story? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we, brought, we were talking about that the other day. I just forget when you're in a nightclub, people who generally had a big night, and I'm always so composed and looking after myself mm. that I don't realize that other people are putting themselves in them sort of uh, mental states. But yeah. anyway, yeah, so I carried that. 
and I think I'll let you know, probably yeah. the first time we got on the piss that I thought you were a bit arrogant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, I don't remember doing yeah, that. Yeah, must have been um, a memorable player, yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, who? <laughs> um, I know you want to bring this up. I, I know it's, it, mate, it's still bizarre you bought that notepad, but... Um, mate, I needed to write it. There was things I had written in there that I need to remember about you that I read before. it. The smelling salts. Mm-hmm. Oh, so we'll, we, we leave the. I'm going to give everyone a bit of context about you and me. I'm, I'm a bit more high energy. You're a bit flat when you don't have a microphone or a camera on you, <laughs> and or you had seven coffees in the afternoon. And you know, I used to be the mood coach for the the Dragons <laughs> bus, so I'd try and bring the energy to the bus. And Jimmy, you'd be a little bit flat every now and then. And um, this particular afternoon, he was emu and he was down. He was down and out. It was the day before a game. It was a, it, yeah. It was captain's run. Yeah, it was captain's run. Oh, man, I remember Cleary, clearly, Nathan, Nathan Cleary. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you just can't, you have your good just against that. Oh, like, nah, co- oh, Ivan, Nath, great, great people. Did I have one of my mentors. Did, did you co- did, did Ivan coach He you? coached me in like most of my game. Well, I had him at the Warriors, Penrith, three years. Also, like, he, he always brought you in. Did he, uh, who went first? I'm like the unlovable did, child did, that he just brings me around. No, nah, is it like the Darius Boyd and Wayne Bennett combo? You, you <laughs> no, he didn't bring me back when he got the oh. job. I might have won a comp. <sighs> Ivan, where's a fucking call? Oh, so. Um Anyway, so he he he's really flat in the afternoons. Every now and then, if something happened, he might no, have no, a little bit. I was bit focusing. Energy. I was fo- I was getting ready to. to well, every play. that hour down and hour back every trip. Yeah. I'm sure I could get any of the boys on that bus to step in for me here. But anyway. I'm at the back of the bus looking to get the bus going a little bit and I'm going through the bags and I come across Jammer's bag and <laughs> find his toiletries bag in there and I get his uh, – yeah, he had these smelling salts that um, boxing trainers give to the boxers when they get stunned or smacked in the face. So um, I've opened that up and um, I'm just smelling it and not realising it's wafting around the bus and <laughs> Jimmy's just turned around and give me an absolute spray <laughs> – Going, you fucking think that this thing doesn't run out? You're fucking dumb. You go, I, I had no idea. I thought you could just replace it and put more liquid in, and it was constantly replaced. And I used to love smelling. No, you it. thought it said it lasted forever. No, I didn't. you did. <laughs> you said I thought it lasts forever. Anyway, I love. I, I loved it before a game. It used to just let me know I'm playing footy. So um, he goes, "You're not fucking getting this tomorrow," and I'm like, "Oh yeah, whatever." Like thinking he's just mucking around. He'll let it go by the next. Day. <laughs> I don't, we must have travelled down together that game. We're playing manly and. It was a Saturday night game and I remember he went to go in the toilet and I was like, fuck, I'll quickly run over to his locker and grab the smelling salts. <laughs> I've grabbed him out. He's come back out and gone, don't you fucking touch him. Dead serious. <laughs> I'm like, come on, brother. Like, this is part of, this is another one of my oh, routines. Is, you routine that you'd never done before <laughs> until. I, I did it before every game. You know I did. Anyway, that was, um, that was it. So I ended up, I don't, don't think I played well because I didn't smell the smelling salts and, at the end of the game, we'd won pretty well and he comes up cuddling me, acting like my best mate and I was still filthy on him because he wouldn't <laughs> let me smell his salt. Like, to, to give our viewers and listeners context, so those smelling salts were unavailable here in Australia and they'd actually stopped making them in England. So supply was limited and they only came out on game day. I bought them to the Dragons. No one else used them. L- Little Mick had different smelling salts, but these were Yeah, great. they weren't very good. They weren't very good. This I like SC the, Ball. Your, yeah, yours were NRL. They, these were like potent. Mm. And like, I, I used to have it before. And then came to the Dragons and, you know, people like, Everyone's oh, what, claimed what, it. what's yeah. that? It's like, oh, can I, can, I, can I have a go of them? Can I have a go of them? Like, for fuck's sake. Like, like, I think we've written our like, name on it, JL and JG. <laughs> yeah, like, no. But anyway, share, you know, share the wealth, whatever. Like bring everyone along, but then because I know they're limited and they're running out, like you, like I'd be what the worst thing people would like leave it with the lid on. I'd be mm. like, so I'd give them to people like put the lid back on straight away, make sure because you know you don't want to release the fumes because then it runs out and then the 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 useless yeah. for everybody. Yeah, and then I see you on the back of the bus just like <laughs> waving them around. So mate, like, fired the boys up. Everyone had a laugh and mate, but, sad. James but, carried but, it. But, Talk but, about people carrying grudges. You carried a grudge against me for twenty four hours. <laughs> Not years <laughs> later. <laughs> Well, mate, you're still bringing it up. Let it go, man. Mate, you, you, mate, you said we've got to talk about the smelling salts, but I'm, I'm telling you why I was so angry. Oh, mate, you because still... they, because they run out. Yeah. So you can see in my position why I turned around. But what? And yeah, we, we... you only had one more year after that. You still had enough. 
life in that thing to get you through another 18 months. Luckily, I knew someone who knew someone to who managed to source them. So, um, but yeah, is it, I'm trying to think, is there any other... Townsville? You want to talk about Townsville? We'll touch on Townsville. That, you know, that's Townsville one of, 2018 and Townsville you and Cameron oh. McGuinness. So, Cam, is it Cam McGuinness or Cam McGuinness? It's Cam McGuinness. Cam McGuinness. Cameron McGuinness. There's no G in it, is there? But you it's, say Cam McGuinness. Oh, Cam. Oh, sorry. That's to be McGuinness. Oh, no, that's yeah. Guinness. Cam McInnes. McKines. McKines. <laughs> nah, Do you know I legitimately used to call him McKines? McKines. Yeah. It doesn't surprise me. Was it, well, with, was it with Dale Finucane you did the podcast and you stuffed up a word there? Was it? Oh, oh Wagga Wagga. Wagga Wagga? Wagga Wagga. We're well, still going down there for the race there. That's how it reads? Yeah, Wagga Wagga. But but anyway. But anyway, yeah. Look, but m- m- yeah, Let's not share the on. detail. No, nah, look, I think we lost like three games in a row. And um, we went up and beat the Cowboys. And obviously up in Townsville, it's a great place to play footy. Middle of winter, sunshine and still beautiful weather. I think Mary put me on the second half for a whole of 15 minutes. So I felt like I had a great contribution to the game. Still full of beans after you know, Red Bull and three coffees before the game. <laughs> I remember there's a photo of me and you walking around and like we're doing that wave and then there's a photo. Remember the photo of me and you? Nuts, wait. I got it at home. I think Ollie's got it on his wall. Oh, really? Of me and you. But I remember saying to Macca as we're walking off, I'm like, bro, I've got this feeling about tonight. I go, you're going to have to put the reins on me. And he sort of just looked at me. (laughs) (laughs) Well, anyway, next thing it's six o'clock in the morning. I think you and Gaz had put the cucumbers on and me and and Yui Aiken have ended up in the room together. And I think, I think we had to leave at 11.30 that next morning. And um, I've still got videos and photos of me and you and on my phone, um, nude, <laughs> dancing like Shania Twain and um, Desiree, life, all life. Yeah. But I'll never forget Cam McGuinness. He um, must have been walking to get breakfast at about 10 o'clock or something and he must have heard all the commotion in the door and he's opened the door and me and you are standing there in the nude, <laughs> dancing. <laughs> and he sort of looks at me and I'm like... Oh, fuck. Sorry for living, Macca. <laughs> he just shut the door and walked off. <laughs> and then I'll never forget, Jay Field come in. It was about 20 past 11. We're still nude. He's like, bro, we're going to go. I'm like, fucking, where are we going? He goes, we're going to go get on the bus. And I, I had, like, my memories a bit black. Mm. I don't remember much. But um, get the clothes on. And there's a photo of me and Yui at the back of the bus getting clothes. That. And then Lisa and Ami, I remember. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Leeson, one of the uh, toughest men I've ever met. Mm. And great, great, great bloke. And he was sort of like the security guard. He didn't drink and kept everyone in line. And I decided to follow him around the airport and steal his Maltese before <laughs> get on the flight. And I had no recollection of this, but I um, I've, I had a white polo on. And anyway, I've I finally hit the wall when I've got on the flight. And <laughs> I've woke up in Sydney. I've got like chocolate stains all over the front of my shirt. <laughs> I must have been eating chocolate, fell asleep and dribbled. <laughs> I look at Mary and Mary's just looking at me shaking his head <laughs> filthy. And I'm like, fuck, what happened? And then anyway, you just reminded, well, that next, you know, when you wake up the next day, like, fuck, what have I done? I had that much it's head horrible, noise. Isn't it? You, had, you had to drive me home. They wouldn't let, well, obviously wouldn't let me drive home. Um, but he's reminded me about the Lisa and Armour thing. So when he got into training on Tuesday, there was a brand new pack of Maltese <laughs> for, with a cart. Sorry. <laughs> Love you, Lee. Uh, two of the two of the greats, um, Lisa Nalmo and Cameron McInnes, yeah. Cameron McInnes, um, two legends, absolute legends. Like they like, actually uh, are. They are like amazing people. Um, no, no one. You know, Cam McInnes is one extreme. You know you, how he can push himself through mm. the pain barrier. To <laughs> two days after game, he's squatting two hundred kilo, and um, I wouldn't say mean you had that training mentality. <laughs> not in the gym. No, on the field, yes, but you not did. In the yeah, gym. I probably didn't. Right. Off the field, I did. But the gym was not. I, I I don't mind it now, but oh, wasn't wasn't a fan of weights. Oh no, mm. we're training partners. I saw mm. you, um, Jerry. Three questions we are we are asked each and every guest. Now I know you listen to the podcast, so you know what will be coming, right? I actually don't. I swear to God, I don't listen to it. <laughs> <laughs> I was taking the piss, um, Jerry. You you've admitted you you don't listen to it. maybe you just don't listen to the full episodes of the podcast, or you just get the- whatever goes on Instagram is what I watch. Yeah, Still well. feel that you've, you, you. I remember you saying we're going to do a show together. I, I've seen you and Cheese have your own show. And when Jerry and Jammer, you know, revise the deck, <laughs> like I'm not holding my breath. <laughs> I'd be running out of oxygen, as you like to say, you awesome <laughs> thief. <laughs> uh, right, the three questions. 
that we ask each and every guest this year. Uh, if you hadn't made it or football didn't exist, what would you be doing? And I'd be on the World Bodyboarding Tour. <laughs> <laughs> Nah, I don't know, mate. Like, I, I all my mates in Port Macquarie are tradies, so hopefully I would have come to Sydney and found me way there. I love numbers, so maybe I would end up a mortgage broker. I'm not an accountant, but might have been a mortgage broker anyway. You love numbers? You know I like numbers. Love money, investing. Yeah, let's, let's just say body border. <laughs> body border. That... Is there, a bo- I think, is there a bodyboarding scene? Mate, a couple of the greatest bodyboarders in the world have come from Port Macquarie. I don't, I don't know but what that, they get is paid. Is like saying that, that, that some of the greatest Tiddlywinks players have come from? Like, <laughs> Mate, if you want to put a negative spin on it, you put a negative spin no, on no, it. Like, I, it just, I don't even know. If, is, is there a professional bodyboarding There is a professional bodyboarding circuit. Michael Eppleston, oh, you wouldn't know him, but Damien King, a couple of the great Port Macquarie bodybuilders. Mate, again, I'm, I, I'm, what? I'm ignorant to it. I, I guess I didn't know. I Mate, thought like everybody surfed. I thought come surf- to mine tonight. I'll give you a bit of a lesson. All right, <laughs> show you some of the old clips. <laughs> you got video. I've got photos. Um, yeah. yeah, I'm about fifty kilos, ringing wet, <laughs> big buckies, long hair, <laughs> Did you? yeah, big white zinc on the lips. <laughs> oh, in the green room. <laughs> That's um, the biggest sliding doors moment in your life. So I like to to, to think about um, different, like big choices that have that have made, or or maybe perhaps even small choices that have led to to big things happening if they did or didn't happen. So yeah. for me, the easy one is whether or not came to Australia, like a big impact on my life. Um, what about you? God, I know it was, a, it was probably a choice from the Cronulla Sharks to sign me because if I didn't get that opportunity, I don't know, you know, I wasn't very, like my mates in Port Macquarie are traders and whatever. So if that opportunity never come up for me, I don't know where or what, I would obviously worked it out. But, um, you know, I wouldn't be sitting here on a couch with me, mate, Jimmy Graham and, um, you know, the opportunities and everything that's come to me through the game of rugby league is, um, yeah, I'll call that my sliding doors moment because I'm forever grateful for that opportunity given by Cronulla Sharks back in the day and took me around the world. Mm. You're a very grateful person. Thank you, mate. Do you want to look at my mm. phone? Three yeah. gratitudes every day. Grateful for sitting on the couch with Big Jimmy G. <laughs> you do, I know you do practice gratitude. I just don't know how much you mean it. <laughs> are you cracking him? What are you saying? I'm not grateful. No, Bro, no, I'm saying- I journal, I'm grateful. I know you're grateful, but you're like, I don't know if you mean what are you grateful for? <laughs> but do you want to see what's up with Ma? No. <laughs> Mate, it'd be, it'd be a freaking giggle. <laughs> Go on. That, show, 28. Show us what you're grateful for. I'm grateful for 2018, man. Let me look what my last three were. <laughs> Having a great workout this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Having a positive meeting at the brewery with Groover and Jading. So many great things going on everywhere. I'm loving this. Is that what you've wrote? <laughs> you actually you write down every day. Oh, every day. You roll back to like 2017. Really? Yeah. Well, whenever the the Hugh, Hugh Van, whatever his name is, come out and spoke about gratitude, resilience, empathy. So yeah. thanks, Hugh. Try it at home, listeners. I I, I Say what I'm out loud, what I'm grateful for every yeah. day. I'll, uh, Say you, you'll get a start tonight having a sitting down with Jammer for a, for a laugh. Yeah. All right. So yeah, go outside. Screaming about that podcast well, we were going to do together. Mm. <laughs> go outside, say hello to Mother Earth. Say thank you. Oh yeah, mate. High power. How you going, bro? Yeah. Um, Lead me. I'm Guide grateful me. for you know, <laughs> everything. <laughs> <laughs> grateful for the thousand schooners after this. <laughs> <laughs> That's um, a joke. That's a joke. Who's the most interesting person that you've met? You must have met some. Oh, you, mate. You, 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 I reckon I'm, I'm interested to hear this. Mate, I'm well traveled, as you know. Mentored a lot of the young stars of the game. <laughs> <laughs> Been mentored by some of the greats in Jimmy Graham, Nathan Hindmarsh, Simon Mentoring. Did you, you play met, with? Play with Hindy. I'll give him a tip oh. on. He scored a try off it. I'll call that a try assist. I'll give it before the line. He broke the line, but. Got to, got to start on the Fletch and Heine when I was on there. Um, mate, I'm going to say one of my great great mates who you know and we, we, I've told you plenty of stories about him and uh, James Maloney. 
He uh, is one of the most interesting freaking characters in the world. Um, obviously, had this ability. If the game's on the line, he wanted the footy. I'll never forget when we were at Wentworth Hill back in the day. He wrote Des and Troy on his arm guards. <laughs> Destroy. <laughs> <laughs> and we're gone out to warm up. And Rip Taylor goes, what the fuck is that? Jimmy goes, Des and Troy, when they combine and destroy, get the fuck in there and take them off. <laughs> so he walked back in with the tail between his leg and had to wrap, wrap his arms up again. But he, yeah, and he's actually a really intelligent guy. Like he's obviously got a fantastic rugby league IQ and, you know, he's coming back at the end of the year and no doubt will be involved in the game in some capacity. But obviously a, a larrikin, a bogan, um, mate, some stories I'd love to tell, which I don't know if you'd allow me. Went to Oktoberfest with him last year. Mate, I've got a backpack. It's like I'm going around Europe. I'm only over there for a week. Jimmy rings us, like FaceTimes me and me two best mates before we're leaving Australia. He goes, I'm just bringing a backpack. We go, what do you mean? He goes, I'm just bringing a backpack with a like, shirt, sh- shoes and shorts. He, 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 and and that, that was the kit he was going to wear to Oktoberfest. We're going to Amsterdam two days before it. He didn't brush his teeth for a week. Like where he, he's got long hair back, he, he, he uh, long hair now. Like he looks like he's about fifty years of age. <laughs> like he's not aged well, <laughs> man. He brought no clothes. He probably wore the same jocks all week. He's just a, he's turned into a gypsy over there. But that that is why I love the man. Like I lived with him for a couple of years when we were younger, and he used to drive me nuts. Like I'm you a played little, a few clubs with him. We did, yeah. yeah. We, we we roomed together for Para two years. Ended up at the Warriors together for two years. And Flano used to joke and say he brought me to keep Jimmy under control at Cronulla, but that ended badly for all three of us. So. <laughs> <laughs> Fair. Fair. Yeah, that, that'd be my uh, cat, my cat, and Jimmy Mines. Yeah, nice. Well, um, Jerry, I've I've really, as always, enjoyed uh, sitting down with you, um, telling a few tales. Um, it's been a great chat. I'm sure the listeners will appreciate it. And uh, mate, I I just want to say thank you for coming on. Um, you're a great bloke, and I said this to you the day that you were tired. I think sometimes um, when you because you are the Larrick and you got these funny stories. Um, and you, you you had this ability to um, change the mood in camp so easily, which is a skill that is is underrated with team sport. But not just that 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 was the what, what people would would talk about. But you're actually a very good player as well, mate. I said that to you the day you retired, and, and I mean that, mate. You're a you're a quality front rower, and um, the game is great for having people like you in it. So good on you, mate. You should be very proud of what you uh, managed to achieve, and. Um, I wish you all the best in your future endeavours. I know you're very passionate about LCI, LCI sports, and um, I think I think that's gonna you're gonna really look to help a, a lot of young athletes um, and and older athletes as well. And it's great to hear that it's not a, a two or three year project. It's something for for life, which um, is incredibly important that we don't we don't just um, forget the former athlete. It's a uh, it, it's a lifetime thing. Um, managing um, retiring from professional sport is difficult, and with people like you helping them along the way, they'll uh, they'll help um, lead the best possible lives they can. But again, thanks for joining us, mate. Been an absolute pleasure. Thanks, Jimmy. Always a pleasure, mate. Obviously, become great mates over the last few years, and uh, uh, the two years we spent together felt like ten. The amount of good times we had, and uh, since uh, retirement, we've obviously grown up both a little bit, but. Uh, Always love spending time with you and shouting your coffees, mate. Thank you. (laughs) (laughs) Cheers, lad.